गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज पी वेंकट महेश असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट इन स्टॉफ एरोनॉटिकल इंजीनियरिंग दिस वी वर डिस्कसिंग वन सब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड अप्लाइड थर्मोडायनामिक्स व्हिच इज मेड फॉर 6th सेमेस्टर मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड इन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वन टॉपिक कॉल्ड रेफ्रिजरेशन सिस्टम्स एंड नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट अनदर टॉपिक अबाउट आईसी इंजंस so in this topic we will see what is an ic engine and what is engine how ic engines are classified all those things we will see and in pre present uh, today's class what we will see we will just uh, have a in look into the introduction to ic engines now before going to ic engines we should uh, know what is an engine so engine is a device that converts one form of energy into another form of energy and mainly the engine which we are talking about uh, is a heat engine which converts the chemical energy into thermal energy and thereafter the thermal energy is converted into mechanical energy by some means so this uh, the engine that we are talking about is uh, uh, conversion of this chemical energy into the mechanical energy now the heat engines are classified in uh, classified into two types one is uh, ec engines externally combustion engines and uh, ic engines internal combustion engines so what is this external combustion engine and internal combustion engine now you can see this diagram here this is uh, internal combustion engine and this is external combustion engine and now this ic engine generally we Uh, come across in our day to day life in form uh, i mean uh, in our automobiles and uh, in uh, uh, the portable gen gensets and all we will see the ic engines and the ec engines are external combustion engines so generally we will see in locomotive engines and where the fuel is uh, burnt outside and uh, that heat energy is converting the water into the vapor and that steam is used for the generating the mechanical energy but here if you see inside the engine itself the combustion is happening okay inside the engine itself the combustion is happening that is why it is called the internal combustion engine and here this is the engine and this is the place where the combustion is happening which is external to the engine so it is called external combustion engine so there are some advantages and disadvantages of these engines we will see one by one so uh, the first line is indicating the definition uh, i mean uh, the difference in the form of uh, difference between ic engine and ec engine based on the work so the combustion of the fuel takes place inside the cylinder then it is called the ic engine and the combustion of the fuel takes place outside the cylinder it is called the external combustion engine now here what is the working fuel which you can use the working fuel can be petrol diesel or any other <coughs> gas and now here what is the working fluid the working fluid is a not the fuel but it is the steam that is generated from the water okay so here what type of fuel we are using is not a important thing but here we are very much uh, interested about what type of fuel we are going to use now regarding the space constraint if you see this uh, external combustion engine requires a lot of space you can see the end if you see the olden days uh, the uh, railway engine it is uh, uh, the external combustion engine now here it takes a huge space because the com the we have to carry tons of uh, fuel with that with us but here if you see the calorific value of this fuel is very high and uh, we need a small portable tank which is fitted on the two wheeler automobile and that is sufficient for taking us to hundreds of kilometers in uh, on a two wheel now the these are high calorific value fuels that we are using and here 
the fuel is a low calorific value fuel is also possible in case of uh, external combustion engine and now uh, here the capital cost if you consider the capital cost for uh, for purchasing an automobile we need very less cost as compared to the purchasing a locomotive engine so the cost if you compare the capital which is invested on ic engine is very small very less and compared to the ex the locomotive engines <coughs> now coming to the starting of the engine is quick and easy so you can see just with a kick uh, with a kick, kick on the kick rod or with a starter electronic starter we can easily start the ic engine but if you see the external combustion engine we have to start the uh, combustion of the fuel after that the water will tr start transforming into the steam and finally that steam will be converted into the power so it takes a lot of time and when compared to the ic engine for starting and the thermal efficiency since the calorific value of these fuels are very high the thermal efficiency is also very high and the here the thermal efficiency is very low the power developed per unit weight of these engines is very high the power developed by the ic engine the ic engine is very small the power is developed per unit weight of the ic engine is very high but uh, if you see one engine of a locomotive develops lot of power but uh, the weight is uh, weight of the engine is also comparably very high when compared to the ic engine and the fuel cost is relative high <coughs> and uh, the fuel cost is uh, relative low. low here coal we are using inside this uh, combustion chamber of external combustion engine so it is a very low cost fuel but here if you see the petrol diesel and the gas uh, <coughs> they are very costly fuels now since uh, we are using the combustion external to the engine okay so there is a flexibility where we have to place the combustion chamber okay the engine is here and here we are having the combustion chamber for the fuel combustion of the fuel is happening here in this combustion chamber so there is a flexibility in uh, <coughs> having this kind of arrangement but here the flexibility is uh, not much it is uh, it is supposed to be inside this uh, engine and now here this self starting with the working fluid so if i just ignite the fuel after some time it will start automatically but here what i need i have to use my kick rod and i have to apply mechanical energy for starting so it is not a self starting engine ic engine but the ec engine is a self starting engine and the starting torque is generally very high now here the locomotive engine is uh, uh, pulling you I mean a uh, very uh, large number of bogies of the train and uh, so the uh, that the requirement is the starting torque because the static friction which is uh, supposed to be uh, overcome is very high in case of the locomotive engines and so the external combustion engine produce is supposed to produce a large starting torque but uh, here the ic engine is a small locomotive and the uh, friction is also very less because of the less weight and uh, so this less uh, starting torque is uh, produced now as i uh, i have already repeated so the high calorific values are uh, high calorific value fuels are used so they are very costly but here the calorific value of the fuel is uh, low the efficiency thermal efficiency of this uh, is also low but uh, the cost of the fuel is also low this is a cheaper uh, even compared to these uh, ic engines uh, fuels used in the ic engines 
Now coming to the development of the IC engines. So so far we have seen how the EC engines are and IC engines are different. Now coming to the IC engines because that is the topic that we are, we are going to discuss hereafter. So the development of IC engines. So in 1879, a German engineer called Otto has developed his uh, Otto gas engine. Okay. His uh, first gas engine as uh, shown in this diagram was developed by a German engineer called Otto and uh, that is the first IC engine which is uh, run which has run on petrol. And uh, in 1883, okay, after a few years, in 1879, the petrol engine was uh, uh, built, and in 1883, after a few years, Rodolf Diesel, another engineer, he has produced, he has developed one engine called diesel engine, which uh, runs with the diesel. This runs with the petrol, and this runs with the diesel. So later on. There were many modifications and uh, many improvements on these uh, engines, but this is the starting of the uh, auto or petrol engine, and this is the starting of the diesel engine. Now, how can we classify the IC engines? There are many ways which we can classify the IC engines, and the first uh, classification is uh, based on the cycle of operation. So how many cycles are uh, there for the engine when this uh, for one power stroke. Okay, so this is a per power stroke how many cycles are required that is the classification. The cycle of operation means for each power stroke how many cycles are required. So this is a two stroke engine and this is a four stroke engine. So in a four stroke engine for uh, two cycles, I mean, uh, say suppose uh, this is one stroke, return stroke, and another forward stroke, return stroke. We have four strokes. In, out of these four strokes, only one is the power stroke. But here if you see forward stroke and backward stroke, in a two strokes itself, we are having one power stroke. So this is called the two stroke engine and this is called the four stroke engine. So the classification is based on how many st uh, strokes are required for each power stroke. Okay. So this is a here we need in two strokes one forward and return and here we need four strokes one forward return forward return. like that we need four strokes for each power stroke that is uh, produced. So the next classification is based on the combustion cycle. So how the combustion happens, okay, how the combustion happens based on that uh, the IC engines are classified as the auto cycle and the diesel cycle and the dual cycle or combined cycle. Now the auto cycle means uh, here the combustion is happening at a constant volume. Okay. The, this is the volume. This is the volume pressure. The PV diagram it is shown here. And the combustion is happening at, uh, at the constant volume. At constant volume, the combustion is happening in case of the auto cycle engine. And in the case of a diesel cycle engine, if you see, the combustion is happening at a constant pressure. Throughout the combustion, the pressure is remaining constant and that is called the diesel cycle engine. So the diesel cycle engine, we are having a constant pressure combustion process and in a auto cycle engine, we are having a constant volume combustion process. But in, ca in both cases, the exhaust stroke is always a constant pre volume process. It is not a constant pressure process. In both cases, it is a constant volume process. Now, combining these two, we have a dual combustion cycle. And in dual combustion cycle, part of the fuel is combusted in 
at constant volume and the part of the quail is combusted at a constant pressure. So this is the dual combustion cycle engine, dual cycle engine, the auto cycle engine, dual diesel cycle engine and the combined cycle that is a dual combustion cycle engine. So this is a based on the combustion cycle we are classifying the IC engines. Now, so the IC engines can be classified based on the arrangement of the cylinder. Now here you see the cylinder is a, like this, a horizontal one. Now here if you see the cylinder is a vertically placed. So this is a vertical engine. This is a horizontal engine. And now here two engines are placed in the form of a V. In shape of V, two engines are used. So it is a, a V shape engine. And the here the radially the engines are arranged. So it is called a radial engine. So here one cylinder, one cylinder, two cylinder, multiple cylinders. So this is another classification that we are going to see. So the if the engine is in horizontal position, then it is called horizontal engine. If the arrangement of the cylinder is vertical, then it is called vertical engine. If two engines are arranged in the shape of a V, then it is called V type engine. And if the engines are arranged uh, radially, then it is called the radial engine. Now, based on use, where they are used, how they are used. Now, this is a huge power set, huge generator, which we cannot move from one place to another place very easily. And uh, this is called a stationary engine. Okay. A stationary engine is uh, one where, which is fixed in one place and constantly produces some power. And generally the mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy using this kind of engines. So the next one is portable engine. So the portable engine, one example is uh, our portable gen set which uh, generally we use in our uh, domestic purposes. So this is uh, a portable generator or gen set where it is easy to carry from one place to another place. So the next one is uh, the marine engine. So the marine engine means uh, when these IC engines are used for the uh, ships, Okay, so this is the propeller that is run by these IC engines and this is the marine engine. So if the engines, the IC engine is used for uh, running a ship, then it is called a marine engine. And if you, this is a familiar one, which we generally see in automobiles, so four-wheeler automobiles, and uh, this is called the automobile engine. If the engine, IC engine is used for running an automobile, it is called the automobile engine. Now, <coughs> if the IC engine is used for running the huge aircraft, then it is called aero engine. So based on the use, how the IC engine is used, the IC engines are classified as stationary, portable, marine, automobile, and as well as the aero engines. Now, based on the fuel which we use, we can classify the IC engines as oil engine. Okay, if we are using a kerosene oil or any other oil, uh, then it is called oil engine. And uh, if it, we are using a diesel engine, that is a diesel engine. If we are using a petrol engine, petrol in the engine, then it is called petrol engine. If I am using the gas, we have seen one caterpillar engine engine. And in that, uh, what they did, they have, I mean, re these, these days we can see many, many automobiles running on the uh, gases, okay, the CNG gases, compressed natural gas engines. So, if the gas is used for running the engine, then it is called the gas engine. And uh, so, this is a air injection engine, solid injection engine, carburetor engine, like that, uh, many types of method of uh, fuel supply. So this is the method of fuel supply. It is a carburetor, hot bulb, solid injection, air injection, like. Now, based on the speed of the engine, 
a the our general two wheelers are uh, low speed engines and the uh, the aero engines are high speed engines and the locomotive engines are medium speed engines and the four wheelers also so the uh, the formula one four cars and they are called medium speed engines <coughs> now method of the ignition so how we are igniting the fuel so based on that we can classify the ic engines in two ways one is a spark ignition or externally ignited one and the compressed ignition so that is a in compression ignition engine we don't need any spark be because of the heat and the pressure that is there the fuel gets combust i mean uh, at the high pressure uh, if we just inject the fuel it will start burning so that is uh, we don't need any external agency for comb uh, initiating the combustion but in case of the ic engines in general ic engines they are spark ignition engines sorry yeah the petrol engines they are spark ignition engines and the diesel engines are the ca engines are compression ignition engines now based on the cooling system that is provided the ic engines are classified into two types one is air cooled engine and the other one is water cooled engine See so all the two wheelers that we use, they are air cooled engines. Surrounding the engine, we have fins like this. And the air flows through these fins because of the moment of the engine, moment of the automobile or the bike and the engine gets cooled. So that is air cooled engines. So the other one is water cooled engines. Generally, all the four wheelers and multi, the trucks and all they are water cooled engines. And so the governing, so the governing means we are trying to regulate the fuel that is supplied based on the demand. So based on that governing method, also the engine is. Engines are classified. One is heat and mist governed engine, the quality governed engine, and the quantity governed. Engine. So, the quality of the mixture is controlled whether high uh, uh, lean mixture is required or rich mixture is required. The quality of the mixture is controlled. Then it is called quality governed engine. And the quantity of the fuel, how much amount of fuel is to be supplied. If that is being governed, then it is called the quantity governed engine. And according to the number of cylinders, as we have already seen, if one cylinder is there, then it is called single cylinder engine. If more than one cylinder is there, then it is called a multi cylinder engine. Now, this is the engine head. So we have seen about the cylinder sparks fuel and all those things now the based on the valve arrangement how the valves are placed based on that the engines are classified so if this is overhead valve engine so both valves are on the top of the cylinder then it is called a overhead engine so if both the valves are one side and they are placed below in, in this kind of arrangement, they are called L head engine. And if here also both sides the uh, valves are there, but they are operating from top. Okay, they are uh, guided by the camshaft from, from the top. Then it is called the overhead engine. If the cams are placed here and they are uh, controlled from the bottom and they are on the either side of the engine then it is called the T head engine. The other one is F head engine where one valve is co uh, controlled from the bottom and the other valve is controlled from the top and they are arranged on either side of the engine then it is called the F type F head type engine. <coughs> so this is a another way which we can classify the engines 
Now we will see different parts of this engine. So what are these uh, different parts of the engine? So the first and foremost part is the cylinder. The cylinder is the confined space. So this is uh, the confined space where the combustion happens. So the cylinder is very important and uh, the cylinder has some lining here, cylinder lining, so that uh, so that lining material is more, more uh, heat resistant and all than the, the surrounding. So the cylinder is uh, the space where the combustion happens. So the next one is uh, the cylinder head. So this is the cylinder head which covers the cylinder and uh, which uh, in which the walls, spark plugs and all those things are placed that is called the cylinder head. So the next one is the piston. So the piston is uh, the reciprocating part which is uh, sliding inside the cylinder. This is the piston which is uh, sliding inside the engine for, and against this uh, the pressure of the fluid will be there and uh, this is called the piston which reciprocates in uh, inside the cylinder and which is converting the pressure energy into the mechanical energy. So the next one is a piston rings. Say suppose the piston. So the cylinder and piston they are completely tightly fixed like I mean they are like this. So what happens is the piston will wear off very fast. So in order to maintain that uh, and if I give some space like this there will be some leakage. So in order to avoid the leakage and as well as in order to uh, reduce the wear of the piston we use uh, piston rings. Okay. Here we use uh, piston rings. So the, these piston rings are of the circular shape and they are uh, providing the leak proof of the fuel from the cylinder and, uh, and they first wear off. Okay. First the piston rings will wear off and it is easy for us to replace the piston rings rather than changing the complete piston. So, so the piston rings are also having a vital role where they provide the leak proof environment as well as they will wear off and we can easily replace the piston rings. So the next one is a good in pin. And we have two pins, one is crank pin and the wrist pin. So this, uh, the connecting rod, this is the connecting rod which is connecting the crankshaft as well as the piston. And this, uh, 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 here one good, good end pin is there, the other one good end pin is here. And this uh, pin about which the, uh, the, the piston is uh, getting operate okay so the here the piston the sliding motion is getting converted into this uh, oscillating motion and uh, with the connecting rod and this oscillating motion is transformed into a rotary motion using this uh, crank and the crank and the connecting rod and the connecting rod as well as the piston, they are connected with this uh, Gaudian pin. It is nothing but a rod. Okay. It is a pin, a cylindrical rod or some, and it is called as the Gaudian pin. And we have two pins. One is a wrist pin, which is connecting the piston and the connecting rod. We are having the other pin, crank pin, which is connecting the crank, crank and the connecting rod. And this is the crank, this is the small portion which is converting the oscillating motion of the crank, uh, connecting rod into a rotary motion and this is called the crank. Uh, 
and the crank shaft all these cranks are mounted on one shaft which is rotating continuously and that shaft is called the crank shaft so the next one is the flywheel we have a flywheel here behind this and this flywheel is having a very vital role what is the vital role of the flywheel so we have a power stroke like this okay we have only one power stroke and uh, remaining three strokes we are not getting any power so uh, what this uh, uh, flywheel will do it will take the maximum or the chunk of the energy from the power stroke it will store it and it will supply during this uh, uh, other stroke so that we have a constant torque at the wheels so so for converting this uh, fluctuating energy into a steady energy the flywheel is uh, used and uh, there is called engine bearing okay and there is called a crank case so the all the crank shafts are inside the case which is called the crank case and sometimes we will have the governor as i said which controls the fuel that is supplied inside the engine so that is a governor and the valve and valve operating mechanism so this is the inlet valve and this is the exhaust valve <coughs> two valves and and these two valves are operated by cams and these cams are operated by this uh, uh, a reduction gear mechanism on the crankshaft so there is a arrangement a, a huge arrangement i mean uh, uh, actually it is a simple arrangement which uh, converts the high rotating speed into low rotating speed and which in turn uh, the cam it will be like this and uh, when it rotates during some portion of time this valve will be open remaining time it will be closed so that, that is called the valve timing so the valves are timed properly so that the fuel can be inleted and exited from the engine the exhaust can be exited from the engine so this is about uh, the parts of the engine so in this class what we have seen is what is an engine so the engine particularly we are talking about the heat engine is a engine which converts the chemical energy <coughs> into the mechanical energy so the chemical energy of the fuel it is converted into the thermal energy thereafter converted into the mechanical energy and the engines are broadly classified into two types one is external combustion engine and the low internal combustion engine so the external combustion engines are generally used in the locomotives and ships as well as old and day ships where the fuel is uh, combusted uh, <coughs> i mean uh, fuel combustion happens outside the cylinder and the working fluid is uh, just steam which is entering the engine and the ic engine which is our uh, the present topic uh, where the combustion happens inside the engine and uh, based on the type of the fuel we use based on the type of the engine or uh, in cycle combustion cycle we use based on the uses based on the uh, cylinder head shape based on the cooling system based on the uh, uses like that we have classified the ic engines into many different types and finally we have seen what are the different parts of the ic engine and what are their functions with this i am closing the session thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates.